Hello, and welcome to Puritan Readings. Today we will read How the Devil Tempts by Thomas Manton. There are temptations from Satan, who is called the tempter. Now, the devil's temptations are evil and for evil. How doth the devil tempt? 1. By propounding objects, he showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He had nothing to work upon within, therefore he propounds outward objects. So the devil still tempts us with a curious eye to take in the object that it may be a bait and snare to the soul. Achan takes notice of it himself. When I saw among the spoils of goodly Babylonish garment and a wedge of gold of filthy shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. I saw, I coveted, and I took. The eye awakens desire and desire that inclines to practice. So look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Unless we shut the windows of the soul, this pestilent plague gets in by the senses. The heart is corrupted by objects that we take in by the senses, as it corrupted Eve. It dealt with her first by the sense. The forbidden fruit was full in her way. Then the devil sets upon her. 2. He tempts by the persuasion of instruments, who are the devil's spokesmen. Thus was Joseph tempted by the enticements and blandishments of his mistress. And many times the devil sets nearest friends and relations to weaken their zeal and withdraw their hearts from God. Saith Christ to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. It was Peter who said it, yet Christ rebuked Satan, for the devil had a hand in it. He makes one of Christ's disciples his instrument. 3. He doth it by internal suggestion. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. That is, by internal suggestion, the devil put into the heart of Judas Iscariot Simon's son, to betray him. He haunts and pesters the heart of men by vain thoughts and carnal imaginations. So the God of this world is said to blind their minds. By stirring up the inclinations of our body. When he seeth men inclined to wrath and angry motions or lust, the devil joins and makes the temptest the more violent. He knows what use to make of an angry look, a wanton glance. He knows how to tempt by awakening the inclinations of our own body against us. Take some observations here. In all sins, Satan joineth. He is not idle, but makes use of every inclination of ours. As he sees the tree leaning, he joins issue. But some sins are purely of his suggestions horrid sins, and such are so very evil that they could come from no other but from the devil. Such sins could not be acted by man in an ordinary course of sinning. Judas is treason, though he were devil enough to plot such a thing, yet it is said, Satan put it into his heart. And such singular diabolical suggestions may be darted into the bosom of believers sometimes. Thoughts of atheism, blasphemy, unnatural sins, self-murder, suspicion of the gospel, these things the devil throws in. Therefore, believers are warned to quench these fiery darts that the devil hurls into the souls of men. Every man is haunted with special temptations. Temper, sex, age, custom, calling, company, course of affairs. These things are often spoken of in scripture. From temper, God makes use of temper, for though he plants all grace in the hearts of the regenerate, 
yet there are certain graces wherein they are eminent, such as Timothy for temperance and Moses for meekness. Thus Paul speaks of the law in his members. The devil may find forces from the temper of the body to destroy the soul. So also from sex, as he beguiled Eve, and from age we read of youthful lust, and how strong the devil is about young ones. I have written unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. They are most assaulted with pride, with youthful lust suitable to their age, so from custom and education. I kept myself from mine iniquity. Every man hath his iniquity, that is, such as his education and custom hath wrought upon him, which makes the sin prevail over other sins. A child of God hath a predominant sin, not over grace, but that is inconsistent with sincerity, but some master sin that prevails over the rest. According as the channel is cut, so corrupt nature runs, but some in this channel and some in that. Every man hath his special sin, and accordingly the devil plies him. Then our calling is a special temptation. The apostle speaks that a bishop should not be a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Pride, ostentation of gifts, and vainglory in such public service. Many other sins follow every calling. Therefore, if you would be skilled in Satan's enterprises, you must mind temper, age, calling. It is so with company. As a man's company is, his soul is insensibly tainted. As a man that walks in the sun is tanned before he is aware, so are the souls of men sullied and defiled by carnal company before they be aware. A man would think that of all sins, passion is so uncomely that it should not tempt another man. Yet it is said, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. For the more accustomed to them, the less odious they seem. So little by little, our spirits are shaped and fitted for such a sin. There are certain sins that are more special temptations. Look as every disease hath a diet that suits with it, so it is with all sins in the soul. Satan knows what baits we will catch at. The sins of the devil tempting must be distinguished from our sin in consenting. If the devil tempts and we consent not, it is his sin. The envious man may throw weeds over the garden wall, but if we do not suffer them to root there, it is not the gardener's fault, but the fault of the envious man. Likewise, the devil may fling into temptations fiery darts, atheistic or blasphemous thoughts, yet if we throw them out with indignation and give no harbor and entertainment to them there, it is our misery, but the devil's sin. Therefore, if our hearts abhor them at the very first rising, though they be man's cross, they will be put upon Satan's account. Satan, if he cannot prevail by the first temptation to draw us to sin, he will seek to prevail by a second or subsequent temptation to draw us to trouble and discomfort. If he cannot weaken grace, he may molest and disturb our comfort by flinging in a blasphemous thought, which is abhorred by a Christian. If he cannot draw you to deny God, then he will seek to cloud things, so that you may suspect your own estate. Thus our way is made wearisome to us. Look as a candle that sticks to a stone wall cannot burn the wall, yet it smudgeth and defileth it. So the children of God, when the devil seek to make their temptation stick, Though he doth not burn their hearts with their fiery darts of blasphemy and atheism, they catch not there, yet they weaken our comfort. Then his second temptation is to bring us to doubt God's love, to doubt our faith. 
and to draw us to impatient and murmuring at God's hand. Therefore, it should be our care not only to withstand the devil's first temptation, but also his second. Certainly, they cannot stand long that seem to give up themselves to Satan's snares. How may this be done? Any carnal affection, unmortified, layeth us open to the devil. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. If a man cherishes his worldliness and does not mortify it, he lieth ready to be seized upon as a ready prey for Satan. Judas had the bag and lay open to the devil. His worldliness increased upon him, so the devil entereth into him. Again, when we ride into the devil's quarters and will parley with temptation, when we freely open the windows of the senses unto alluring objects and can dally with the snare and play about the temptation, then we do but tempt God to leave us and to tempt the devil to surprise us. Therefore, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. What is sobriety? A holy moderation in the use of worldly things. Be sure not to leave any carnal affection unmortified. And then, be watchful. Take heed not to play about the temptation, nor put yourselves upon occasions for sin. For then we lie open to the devil and give him an advantage against us. Thus much for the second sort of temptations, such as come from Satan. Thank you for joining us today on Puritan Readings. Please subscribe for more sermons and books read aloud.